Welcome back, everybody. And I decided to give you a little taste of North Carolina. It's a little gloomy, but it's still really cool in the summer. So I am so excited. This is the most amazing series. We thank you so much for staying with us. And this is all about business brilliance. But more than that, to me, it's about personal brilliance. And it's about the brilliance of women and men that are really taking society and their own gifts to the next level. And today we have a wonderful woman, Dr. Susan Edelman, and she'll tell you more about her background in a second, but I came to know Susan through a group we were both in, and she's written this amazing book, and men, you can get this for your women too, but it's called Be Your Own Brand of Sexy, and the subtitle is A New Sexual Revolution from Women, and now you guys are like, oh yeah, let's talk about that. No, we'll talk about that another time, but just, you know, how innovative and definitely a niche and so needed uh, for guidance for young women and women today as we struggle with all these different roles, still have the glass ceiling, still have all these things going on in our society. But we'll go back kind of to the beginning, uh, Dr. Susan, and could you kind of tell us how did you become this author? I do want you guys to know she's a Beverly Hills Book Award winner, so she's received recognition you know, for this book, and a lot of people have amazing things to, you know, say about it. I encourage you to go out and purchase that, and she can tell us. I, I believe it's probably in your bookstore or on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. I'm not sure, but she'll tell us all about that at the end. But welcome to the show, Dr. Susan, and how did you become this wonderful, amazing, creative book writer? Oh, Kimberly, thank you so much for having me today. I, I've been in practice of psychiatry as a psychiatrist and a psychotherapist for many years now, 30 years. Wow. And I was starting to hear these things in my practice from women mm -hmm. that really concerned me. And then I heard from a, a, the daughter of one of my close friends that she went off to college and she was concerned because the guys were asking her to come over and hang out. And she didn't know what that meant. And she asked me, and I wasn't really sure what to say, even though I was supposed to be the savvy single older woman. So as it turned out, all these guys at her college really were looking for like casual hookups. And it was very disturbing to her because she really wanted more of a relationship and wasn't interested in casual sex. So I started to wonder what had happened to courtship and romance and had dating become passe? you know, what, what is going on in terms of power for women or women who now choose not to have casual sex, getting the short end of the stick? And what does this mean for empowerment? This didn't sound like what we were looking for in the 60s with the women's movement and the sexual revolution where these girls have no choice if they want to have a date. So I become, became very alarmed and she said, Susan, you have to do something about this. And I thought, well, you know, as a psychiatrist and a single person, I really am in a position to try and change this. So that's why I wrote my book. So that was, it's so funny. I love that. I, I kind of call that the, you don't know what's around the next corner of your life law. So, you know, someone, you bump into someone and they become your husband of 50 years, or your wife of 50 years, or someone, you know, invites you over and it becomes this massive multi-million business or some, you know, someone says you need to do something about this and it triggers a doorway that opens to a book. So I think that's a takeaway, you guys, that, you know, it may seem like there's no entryway into anything, you know, and you just have to keep repeating this pattern. But truly when you're open and when you're listening, I love what you just said, because I think that's, that's a certain amount of receiving and listening and then taking action and responding. So you could have heard that and been like, oh yeah, I'll kind of incorporate that into my practice and keep that in mind. But instead you said, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to kind of tackle this head on and, and, and see what happens, you know, and I love that. So that's a great takeaway, you guys. So writing a book, you know, I know there's a lot of people listening that would love to start a podcast or write a book and I want you to hold it up because this is an actual book, not, you know, I've read an ebook. I'm, I'm all about ebooks. I'm also all about, I, I still, maybe it's my age. I love the visceral feeling of a book, you know, and so that's a big accomplishment in the digital age, you guys, to still find a publisher or self-publish even, but actually to have a book, you know, that people can walk in and pick up and hold. So congratulations on that. I think it's brilliant. But let's say we want 
to write a book. How does that happen from, I'm going to do something about this. Why don't you share maybe how long it took you to write a little of your writing process? And then how did it become this actuality in physical form? Well, it took a while. And part of the reason it took a while, because the message had to percolate. There's, there's something about really trying to figure out how to approach a really big message like this. I mean, I'm taking on our culture with this message. So that's a hard thing to do. And you really have to figure out when you're doing something like that, you have to have a lot of different opinions and figure out which opinions really speak to your mess and message and strengthen it and which opinions kind of don't help you. So in the process of doing it, I realized that maybe my point of view wasn't going to be the best approach, and I really needed to hear what other people had to say and shape it from that. So it, that process took quite a while. And, and in the process of doing that, I also had a lot of people who were interested in the topic and really trying to help me along the way, which, of course, is tremendously helpful in any book process because you want people to be a part of it especially when it's creating a movement of sorts which is the way I see this so so I had you know it's just hard Kimberly when you're not a natural writer to write something so you know I was in a book group I had a lot of help with the writing process and the you know, publishing process. But I think the hardest thing was really shaping what you want to say so that it comes out the way you want to say it. So as far as getting this into physical form, did you, were you offered a contract by a book publisher? Is this self-published? How did you make this happen? Take it, taking it to the next step. Apparently it's very hard to get a book publisher unless you have a huge following. And I thought I could choose one or the other. Do I want the following first or do I want to write the book and shape the message first? So I probably did it backwards, you know, the way they recommend that you do it if you want a publisher. But I learned a lot about self-publishing and I like to have the control over it too, which apparently you don't have with a publisher, which is really important with a message like this. Because when you're taking on your culture and sort of saying, you know, this is not good, maybe the publisher won't like that message and they'll want to cut your chapter out or whatever. So I think it's good for the integrity of the message as well. I love that because your book's all about, you know, personal power, no matter what sex you are. I think there's principles in here that definitely apply to both um, men and women and from energetic standpoint, a spiritual standpoint, mental, emotional, all of that cultural, as you said, but I love the power aspect. Gone are the days. Really. If you think about it, staying in a workplace that you're not happy with in your cubicle or in your office and waiting for life to happen to you, waiting for someone to recognize your gifts and talents and promote you or take you where you want to go as authors or as speakers of the message uh, or visions, gone are the days, and I want you guys to hear this, gone are the days when we have to wait for things to fall on us and happen to us. We are massive and created to be and designed to be massive creators. And so I, I hope you heard what Dr. Susan said. She got involved. You know, she, she recognized her, her spaces where there wasn't knowledge, and she sought out people who did have the knowledge or who could be her cheerleaders and her tribe and her encouragers and help her, you know, through this process. But I love that she chose to not do it maybe the traditional marketing or advertising way, which may be more like, we submit a million queries and we write the letters and we apply to this and we apply to that and we beg someone to take our book. Instead, um, you decided this book is happening, whether anybody reads it or not, whether I sell a copy or I sell nothing, whether I develop a list or a tribe, this book is happening. It needs to be out there. And that has opened up. That's why she's on here. Uh, she is becoming recognized as someone with a voice and a message to hear in this topic and in this field. And I imagine it will just grow from here. So I love that huge takeaway. If you desire something and you do not know how to accomplish it, there are millions of writers groups. There's millions of groups. There's still meetup groups, I think, for practically everything on the planet, like people who study ants and people look at the planets and people love to cook and people who investigate the paranormal. So there is help and support out there. 
even though we're kind of really isolated in this computer age, we're also still super connected. And if you don't know, Google it. Type in your town groups that writers groups or, you know, call your, you know what a great source you guys for your area and town that you might not think of is the tourism bureau. You can call them because they're used to wanting people to move there and hooking people up with these communities. You know, is this a good community for writers? And always something to consider when you're moving, you're know, thinking about a move too. Uh, do you have a group right there in person to support you? But I know they have virtual writers groups. I know they do. And, you you know, boards and, and all sorts of information out there. So you have this book and um, it finally happened. What have you done since then to build your business as an entrepreneur? You already have a thriving practice. You've already done the schooling and, and you, you kind of have your thing going on, but it looks like to me like you're wanting to build a more global or national, international outreach. Could you share some things that you have done since the book to build your business? Sure, I'd love to. I will first you do the book thing, right? You do the the speaking and book signing and that the kind of things related to just promoting the book. And then I realized all the things that I hadn't done <laughs> to promote the book because I was so busy trying to get the book out. So the last year has been spent doing things like making sure the website was done properly which you know some of the things it, it wasn't quite um, done as well as it could have to get the reach that I wanted and I had to set up some email to my list and that kind of thing and try to figure out what I want to say and learn about email marketing and I've been developing a course and I am coming out with another ebook uh, and an ebook. So I'm I'm just trying to figure out all the things I have to offer people. And to tr I guess the other thing I thought is this book for you know is a wonderful book, but people are at different stages of this process too. So I wanted a book that would be more like a of a starter guide kind of thing. So then people might be able to. And I think people a lot of people aren't into reading a long book either, you know, like they want a short book and, and our attention spans are decreasing to some extent. So I thought I really needed something to grab people to maybe get them interested in this book later. So another thing I love that you just mentioned is the concept of a course, either taking something you guys have written or a theme of a podcast and creating an online video or audio or even written or combination of all three course or maybe like you said, going backwards, going kind of before the podcast, before the book and starting very basic or extending um, past, you know, the next step. If, if you like the book, join my podcast or join my class. So I think there's some really good information there. You talked about the list. You guys have heard about the list, the infamous, <laughs> infamous list. Um, oh my goodness gracious, the list. Um, and you said you joined an, an email marketing group, which is actually how we met. Um, it's so interesting because you and I have a little differing views of all that. But have you found that helpful um, because you said you're not a natural writer versus I actually am you guys a natural writer. I've been writing professionally since I was 20. A lot of you don't know that. But so for me, it's like nothing to spit out. Books, sales copy, emails. You guys know you're like, could you please shut up? But did you find it? nice to be in a structured group where you had kind of a template and a guide map of how to grow your list or one way because we all know there's a million ways did you find that helpful to join that type of group or could you kind of share your experiences with growing your list and I know it's a process you're still I believe in the middle of like I think do we ever stop growing our list <laughs> I think that I like to learn things and especially about things I'm you know not sure I'm doing right just to know what other people are doing and that kind of thing. So I think taking any kind of writing classes helps me, you know, to write blog posts and even, you know, learning about how to do things on social media and what to write on social media because I'm on trying to develop all that as well. So it's, you know, anything that teaches me how to write better or how to get people interested better, I think is, is I love it. You know, another thing, it's so funny with you, Susan. To me, it's like the in-between things. It's kind of the things you don't say, but you say. <laughs> so I love, it's kind of like, and I'm like this too, it's being that little child, like having that curiosity 
like, you know what, I may not know how to write an email to my list, but I'm sure willing to learn and to hear other people's thoughts and experiences you know, experiences. And I think that's important in growing an entrepreneurial business, whether your business makes a billion a year or you haven't broken five figures. I think having that willingness that not being so stubborn, like I'm pretty sure I can do it all by myself and being in isolation, but the willingness to learn and experiment. And I think, um, I, I imagine that's one thing you've done as I have done in my business is experiment. Some successful, some not so successful. Could you share with us both a, maybe a negative example of something that you tried that for you didn't quite work out the way you thought? And if you could think of, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot, maybe a positive example of something that surprised you with um, the connection that it brought or how well it worked. Well, let's see. That's a good question. Uh, something that did not work out so well was um, someone I hired to do PR for me uh, after for the book launch and after the book launch. And uh, I think I think I found out that it really makes a difference who you work with, that the fit makes a huge, huge difference. And this was a person we just I think we weren't a match and I really wanted somebody who was trying really hard to do the best possible job that they could and she was into just kind of getting by and doing what she'd done before so we clashed right and she kind of felt criticized by me because I was like well why aren't we doing this and um, so it really didn't work out and I think that was that was the one thing that has probably not worked out so well and I think the other things that have been so great are the people who have been able to just help me in amazing ways that um, people, especially when you find someone you do click with, then you find other, like, like the person who's doing my website now, she's referred me to somebody to help with the book stuff and the book lady has been, you know, referred me to someone else. So then you've got a little network of people when you do find the right people to help you. I love that too, because I think that's a really great point that we often don't think about is uh, independent contractors or our staff. It's really important that they kind of get us and they're on the same general wavelength and then they can take it a notch further and um, not that they have their own way. Well, this is the way I do it. This is the way I've done it for thousands of clients. Um, and a, and a, that brings about a really huge point that you're going to hear me emphasize throughout this masterclass, which is everyone is an individual. And I think the best expression of a business or a book or a podcast is coming from your energy, honoring your energy, um, you know, bringing forth your message, but not just the message, bringing forth you. Because we're not just going to buy this book. We might buy every single thing. If we read this book and we fall in love with you and your soul and your energy, uh, like I have, we're going to buy every single thing you put out. We're going to buy, and that's what you want, but you don't want it. And I know you're like this. You don't want it just for the sake of selling. You want it for the sake of something higher. And one thing I love about you, and I'd like you guys to consider as you build your business, as you message your business, as you brand your businesses, when there is something more than just a base kind of knee-jerk need, when there's something more mystical and magical and bigger than you, I think the extent you can grow your business and what you can attract is that much bigger as well. So don't play small. I mean, this is not a small topic. It's a niche topic, which is important. You know, she's not talking about, you know, gorillas in Africa and saving the gorillas and mixing it with us and stirring up some confusing thing where you're like, why are there gorillas on Dr. Susan's website? I don't understand. You know, I mean, maybe down the line, you can do whatever you want. You know what I love? I've got to tell you guys this too, and you'll, you'll find this out, the ones that have it. You get to a certain point of success, and it's really beautiful because you can do that. <laughs> you just can't do that right away, kind of like what we were talking about with some other things. But... I love the big vision. I mean, this is a big vision. Changing society views on sexuality and women's sexuality, both inwardly, what we think, our own judgments, our own perceptions, and the world's, men's, everybody's, you know, people. Huge, you guys. What a brave, 
woman that has a big vision and is passionate about healing because that's what we're talking about, right? We're talking about second chakra. We're talking about healing sexuality. And when we heal sexuality, we heal creation. And when we heal creation, we birth a whole bunch of new books and new podcasts and new businesses. So this is so big. Dr. Susan, do you know how big this is? I guess I don't. That's wonderful. I love hearing you say it. <laughs> I just think it's tremendous. So um, let's kind of wrap this up with a few tips. We talked about a negative and positive example of maybe things you would do differently, but do you have any advice or, or final thoughts that you'd like to say? And I love Dr. Susan because I want you guys to be very aware. I believe she's going to be a household name on Dr. Phil, on, you know, Ellen, on these shows. I mean, this is coming. What I see for you, this is coming. But before that, she's actively building her business, just like you guys right now. And so share a thought or inspiration or, or something that might keep someone that's discouraged going or, you know, an informational fact that might really help them. But just kind of take us out with, with something like that. Uh, you know, Kimberly, I think that's so great. One of the things that I see in my practice so much with people who have trouble getting what they want. I think one it's, it's one of the biggest reasons is they have trouble being their own brand. So they have trouble figuring out what's right for them as an individual. And then they're either trying so hard to please the other person or they're overreacting if the other person doesn't agree with them. So I find that that's a huge problem because then you're kind of distracted from your own goals really you're worried about the other person or you're reacting to the other person so i think being really clear about what's important to you and and really trying to figure out you know what is your true voice and what somebody else swaying your opinion can help a tremendous amount in keeping you on track with whatever you want to accomplish whether it's just having better relationships with people and, and in business, because you really do have to figure out who's right for you, who's giving you good advice, who's strengthening what you want to do, and who's kind of getting in the way of that. That's so rich. I love that. And don't be discouraged, because we all have, whether, you know, we're in the middle or beginning or, you know, we've been at this a while, like me, you know, I still have to do what I call run the energy, which is it's not run the energy over what my group thinks or, or what my parents think or what my kids think or what uh, entrepreneurial magazine thinks. It's running the energy against, does this feel really right? Kind of like a magnetic, you know, does this feel like it sticks for me? Is this going to take me to the next level? So I absolutely love that. Thank you so much. So again, I just want to show you her book, Be Your Own Brand of Sexy Women, but everybody, look this up. Awesome, awesome. It's such a wonderful book. We will have something later about that. Uh, you can watch my stuff for that. But So you have a free gift for us, I think. <laughs> Would you share about that? And then I'd love for you to tell us how can we buy your book, about your website, and anything else you'd like to share. Wonderful. So I have a free gift. So this free gift is... It's something that I've kind of, I'm trying to rework my um, messages from my book for your audience, especially. So this is a quiz that helps people to figure out if they're being their own brand in business and in life. And it's called the Can You Say No to What You Don't Want quiz. So I hope and I have some tips in there as well as the quiz to help anybody in your audience who might be having trouble with this whole process of figuring out if they're really listening to their own voice or being swayed by someone else. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Um, I always say you, you have to know what you want to get what you want, which is you're just coming in through a little different door. You know, say no if you don't know what you, and you know what, some of us, we don't know what we want. We think we do till we get into it, but we don't. So that's one way of discovering what you want is saying no to what you don't want. So thank you so much for doing, I think that's going to be so valuable. I'm looking forward to, I'm going to have to go find that and get a little head start on that, you guys. So um, I need to kind of do some checks and balances in my own business. So tell us, how do we meet up with Dr. Susan? She is available if you guys are um, 
near Stanford in the, I, I am horrible at saying things. It's, uh, it's 30 miles south of San Francisco. I think your offices are located and you can actually go, what a treat, meet in person with this beautiful woman. And I'm sure talk about many other topics, not just sexuality, but certainly um, rapidly becoming an expert in women's sexuality in a very progressive and soulful way. But how, how, tell us all the ways we can connect with you, social media and website and office and all of that. Well, I'm trying to be on all the social media. So I'm on Facebook, Be Your Own Brand of Sexy, Twitter, at Brand of Sexy, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. And I, you can go to my website, be your own brand of sexy.com. I have a blog. I have, if anybody's interested in, I have a quiz to help, a little part of the quiz in the book to help people figure out if they're being their own brand of sexy. I have a seven, mis seven common mistakes women make with men and um, tons of just content on the blog as well because it's been, I've been working on it for a year, over a year now. I love and that. I've got, and I've got an ebook coming out um, and at the end of July. It's what to say to men on a date. That's brilliant. I need that one too. This is why we're friends. <laughs> I can exactly. respect you that. Thank you guys. You guys are talking to Dr. Susan because I personally love her. So um, please, you know, check her out on social media. Um, her website is very. Uh, has a lot of content on a lot of different topics and will really help the way you think of things. Uh, consider networking with Dr. Susan. I imagine at some point I'd love to have her at a live event. I think she'd be a brilliant speaker or workshop, you know, to bring this element in. So lots of opportunities. I'm sure she's open to collaboration. But thank you so much, Dr. Susan, for being with us. Um, I am Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and we will have many more wonderful and amazing men and women like Dr. Susan coming up. So be your own brand of sexy. Check it out. Love you guys and see you soon. Thank you.